Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. Tonight, we're going to discuss Jack Frost and Krampus. Getting I into, can't wait. <laughs> getting into the festive holiday theme. Now, this is the 2015 version of Krampus, by the way, and the 1997 version of Jack Frost. So, we're going to start with... Uh, I'm gonna, I think I really want to talk about Krampus to start out. This is one of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, it hits the dark comedy theme of kind of like a dysfunctional family. This is a film that it's pretty much a National Lampoon's uh, Christmas, only with a little bit of horror kind of mixed in. Uh, Curtis, what did you think of Krampus? So <clears throat> right off the bat, um, I just think to myself, the first note I have here is this is the most epic Christmas movie open ever for a horror Christmas film. I don't, I don't remember there being another one that good. Um, cause it kind of sums up consumerism in its finest. Um, there's a lot of, uh, like culture speak, I feel like throughout this film. Right. Um, yet you're still hit with that really, uh, comedic effect sometimes. And then bam, you're brought right back down to like, oh my God, this is terrible. I can't believe this is happening. Like the mm. next second. Um, so no, I, I absolutely love this movie. I, I agree with you hundred percent. We're probably not going to disagree on too much in this movie, um, other than the fact that I wish there was a better sequel. Maybe that's the only thing I can really complain about. I don't think that there really was a sequel to this film. Like They, they may say there was, but not really. Because there, right. there are a ton of Krampus movies out there. And there's not one that really captures the, no. the comedy of uh, Bob Scott or any of the other comedians that were in this film. Not a single film after Krampus from... Krampus from... Whatever uh, you want to call it, man. From 2015. Not a single film with the same name or similar title holds a, a, a candle to the flame. None of no. them. No, no. So this, this movie is essentially... It's about a dysfunctional family getting together for Christmas. You have your liberal father who's you know kind of anti-guns you have the uh, republican kind of brother-in-law mm -hmm. who kind of ribs and pokes fun at the liberal brother-in-law and then you have the kids which you have the daughter who's you know she's discovering boys and she's going to see her boyfriend you have the uh, the son who's a kind-hearted like one of the most empathic i think he's extremely yeah. relatable he he relates to everyone in the story and he's essentially the hero of the movie all right really i, I mean, would i would say he was the well he's also the villain but we can get into that yeah and then you have <laughs> the the brother-in-law's kids who you have the, the boys you have the dumb boy oh oh the dumb boy the big, the, sorry yeah the big kind of chubby kid who who kind of likes to eat and then you have the girls the tomboy girls yeah um that's who i was talking about yeah 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 <laughs> dad wishes you were boys no he doesn't he screw you yeah yeah that's uh <laughs> I we'll think get there. We'll get there. I think they may. Oh yeah, and they have a baby, which they we'll do. talk. We'll talk a little bit more about the baby. So it starts out, and it starts with kind of like a black Black Friday shopping center, shopping yeah. spree, and people are like trampling over each other. And that, like what Curtis said earlier, is it sets the tone for the film. This is what you're gonna expect from this. It has a very a dark view on the holiday. All the while so. to a classic Christmas song that we all know and enjoy. That's what you're seeing though. So you're getting this wonderful Christmas holiday song. And you're getting just people getting trampled. You've got two people fighting in a store. It's like Target, Walmart, all the you know all the different places or whatever. And that's yeah, that's I mean that's your opening scene. That's how we're setting the tone for this film. It's it's really it's I love it. I just every time I think of it in my head, I laugh my ass off. Oh like, man, it's, it's <laughs> see so like good. the daughter like laughing, yeah, like, video video yeah, taping just everything video. on her phone. <laughs> it's just oh man, and I don't think any movie can capture a, a dysfunctional family. As well as this film, and really, like what yeah. the holidays kind of do with dysfunctional families, like in, in not all cases, but in some, I feel like they kind of came together near the end. They started kind of being a bit more more serviceable. And we could talk about like what what we think happened at the end later. Like we could talk a little bit more. I think you should watch this movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, I'm gonna spoil it for you, so apologies yeah i can't wait to spoil it because uh, this movie was a lot of fun to watch and i can't wait to talk more about it in detail right uh so we we start out at the house and we start with the mom who's hanging up a picture the, the family picture they took with santa and oh, santa claus yeah. is staring at her daughter's ass and it looks like the mom just noticed it and she's just like <sighs> 
Yeah, she finally realized that dirty old Santa at the mall was checking out her 16-year-old, probably 16-year-old, maybe even 14-year-old daughter, yeah. um, who, let's be honest, um, you know, as inappropriate as it is, as the movie goes on, you know the girl, the daughter, is not making the best decisions in life. So it's even mm-hmm. worse because it's real. it just pushes her character even more like, okay, She's in a horror film. You have specific rules. There are rules to survival, and she's breaking quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. So that's the open. You got the mom hanging the photo. She finally realizes she has that moment of, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. And then the family comes over. The family that, shows up. But before that, we were introduced to the grandma. Oh the yeah, father. Shit. We're introduced. You can't so leave that out. The yeah. grandma speaks. She she well for the viewer's perspective, she only speaks German. Yep. I. And she's speaking German to the son. The son speaks German as well as the father. We know those two. Uh, we assume that the daughter as well as the mother don't. Because that's never shown that they them listening or understanding. Maybe they do. I don't remember. The dad understands and the boy. Well, he speaks. We know that. The, the dad speaks. I don't know the boy. Does I don't know if he speaks. You're right. Yeah. But I, I know he understands what she's saying. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. So... He writes a letter. the the main the, the boy he writes a letter to Santa mm-hmm. and he's, he's, he it's very heartfelt. It's very sincere. He's been very good. And like you can tell, he's just a really good kid. And 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 you're just kind of like, well, I don't dislike any of these characters so far until the family comes over, and then it's just kind of a chaotic insanity. So here, here's my comparison on this one. Yes. So when that family shows up, it's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes. Right? You you love the Griswolds, and then the family shows up. You love this family, Adam Scott's family, and then the in-laws show up. The brother-in-law. Right. The sister. And who do they drag with them? Old Aunt Margaret, or whatever her name is. Jesus, cry me, that woman. She is, but, I, okay, as much as I dislike her character right off the bat, Aunt Dorothy. Aunt Dorothy. As much as I dislike her, you grow to like her more throughout the film. Oh, she was my favorite character. The the booze jokes, all that kind of stuff. Like, she just... I don't know. She grows on you. She definitely grows on you. She's in a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Conchata uh, Feral. Okay. She, uh, she's kind of a, the bigger, kind of deeper voice lady. She... Yeah. Kind of gives like a little bit slapstick remarks. Like one scene, if you have you seen Mr. Deeds, like yes, Richie, she works yeah. in the. I ain't diner. got nothing down there. I used to be a rodeo clown. Yeah. yeah. So she's the one who actually holds all of his cards on the wall, right? All of his right. uh, Hallmark cards that he's making. Right. Okay. She owns a diner. I do. I I remember that. I remember right, right, her right. in that movie. Okay. Anyhow, uh, getting off the the sidetrack. Hey, so, tangent number one. We're doing pretty good for being fifteen minutes in and only having one tangent. Well, this this is a. This is a movie I'm probably going to gush over for forever. <laughs> we could we could make a two hour long episode about this movie, but to make a long story short, introduced to the the mother of the main character or, or the boy, the son. What's his name? Uh, do, Ethan. Do, do, Max. Oh, so Max's crap, mother, uh, I believe Sarah. She uh, she her sister and her her sister's husband and their kids come over and they. They're all inside there for like 15 minutes, and then they realize that they left their baby in their car. Yep. And so, step one, you know, okay, we got these absent-minded Republicans, and we are, as the audience, we kind of think less of them for making the mistake. And then, you know, the the girl, the lady's even like, I, I can't, I'm tired of getting judged by you, you keep judging me, I can't make mistakes, blah, 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 I have to be perfect around you, it just drives me off edge. So kind of... Uh, and she says that a lot of those types of quotes throughout the film. Because right. when they're having dinner and the kids don't really like the food, she's like, well, I don't know why you have to make all this fancy food. Like, we'd be good with, you know, just regular food. And then the mom comes back with a pretty good liner, like, well, I can't just make mac and cheese with hot dogs chopped into it. And then the mom goes, why not? Like, she's genuinely yeah, like, not, why not yeah. the, the, the mom and then oh. the sister? So this, right. the, it, basically, she's just taking a shot at her sister's family for not liking her hoity-toity fancy food and the sister's just like we'd be cool with macaroni and cheese right and some chopped up hot dog in it what kind of family doesn't have ham on christmas oh my god that's yeah. i mean that's a pretty fair judgment well she goes in the kitchen and she's like she's like you got any blah 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 in this house and she's like i, I, I can't take any more of your judgment and she's about to dorothy's like oh i didn't realize you know how much work you put into this christmas dinner and She's like, you know, I don't, I don't want any of your, any of your guff. Get out of here. And yeah, yeah. during dinner, 
the Max, uh, he, his letter to Santa gets swiped by these... Uh, by the twins. By the twins, yeah, or the girls, uh, Stevie and Jordan. And she reads it out loud, and she's like, she starts out just kind of making fun of it, but it's such a sincere letter about everyone, like, can you please help my parents fall back in love with each other? Can my sister and I hang out like we used to? Mm -hmm. I can uncle whatever his face stop wishing that my cousins were boys and at that point she's like screw you dad does not wish we were boys and she stops reading the letter and just kind of runs off and he he rips his letter to santa up because of that and like throws it out which i believe the letter goes to santa and that's what summons krampus okay that's my opinion they don't they don't go over that but isn't that how it works, though? That's the mythology behind Krampus, right? Like, enough holiday spirit and sadness and sorrow get combined, and then Krampus is summoned to right the wrongs of Christmas evildoers or whatever? Well, Kramp Krampus is just there to punish children who misbehave. He was, a, he was kind of something the Germans would use to kind of keep their kids in line. Oh, if you're being naughty, Krampus is going to come and put uh. you in his bag and take you away. Uh, there's no real, I don't know, there's no How'd real the grandma describe it? Legend. Like, well... I mean, she, she basically right. did that, yeah. So, spoilers, the grandmother actually had met Krampus before, and yep. Krampus took her family away and shoved them all into bags and gave her a bell, and then disappeared. Yep. And they never came back, they were gone forever, and she's like, I wish I could take that back. Yeah, because basically her wish was that her family would disappear right. because of how awful they were being to each other. Max basically has the same wish after his letter gets ripped up and sent away. But he also goes to his... Ah, man, that's... I agree with you that definitely that letter got there. I don't know if Santa would be involved. Like, I don't know. I like that idea. I'm just not sure how the hell that letter gets there then. Well, it's magic. Well, Santa's a magic guy. I'm sure you write sure. a letter to Santa. But this is just a theory. It's yeah, my... Yeah. No, it's a like, fun theory. I was just trying to yeah. adapt, go with it. Yeah. Well, th well, the ending's up to interpretation, so... The ending is so freaking good, though. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I... So Jordan and Stevie rip up his letter. Yes, yeah, so goes... Uh, he, he rip, no, he rips no, it he up. No, he rips he it up. He rips it up, throws it outside, yeah. and then... I don't know if they go to sleep or what, but the next day, every, there's nobody else there. It's just the family, like Beth or whatever her name is. She goes to see her boyfriend. Yeah, everything's frozen. Even though over. the family didn't want her to, she heads yeah. out into the snow anyways. And Krampus gets her. She introduces herself to Krampus. Yes, yeah, so that's our introduction to actually. We actually see Krampus, you know, jumping from house to house to house. And then from then on, that's the last time we see Krampus until the end of the film. It's also the last time we see Beth. It is all well. Yes, until the end of the film, <laughs> and then. From there, like we see, we were introduced to Krampus's toys. Like you see a Jack in the Box, mm -hmm. and whatever's coming out of the Jack in the Box. I don't know if it's supposed to scare you. It kind of made me laugh. Um, yeah, they're not sure. If I met them in a yes. in a in a street by myself, would I be scared of them? Probably. Oh, terrified because if they they're were coming real, after yeah. me. Yeah, but, but in the viewer... movie, no, it definitely like there's some like I said comedic effects there. Yeah, like, they look funny as hell. But they're also pretty frightening if they were in real life, right? It, it's not meant to scare you. It's meant to kind of show a little bit of lightheartedness. Because there, there are a couple toy monsters in this movie. There's like a flying bat one who's kind of like an angel at the top of the Christmas yeah, tree. Yeah, he quit Ghoulies and decided to come work for Krampus. Really? No. Oh. I wish. <laughs> but no, I actually liked the toys in this one. You have the little gingerbread man. And the, there's a scene where a gingerbread man's like running with the candy king to stab the uncle. Yeah. And the bulldog just like you just see the bulldog just chomping his lips and he's just like huh yeah no i was, I was just laughing because we have another puppet movie so obviously the past two weeks if you've been listening we had ghoulies 2 gremlins elves um even thanks killing had the the turkey puppet in it um and this movie we don't really have it's not puppetry because well, it's 2015 but it's a no i think it is a giant puppet because there's a giant jack-in-the-box the, the jack-in-the-box yeah yes so the the some of the stuff is very cgi yeah, the majority of the but it's the really special well done. I, I mean, the creatures are in this movie are probably one of the biggest highlights. Um, we we've talked a little bit about a grading rubric I have that I'm working on. Um, animation, CGI, puppetry, basically effects are are one of the pieces of the grade. So, like in my opinion, this movie gets a pretty high grade for that. Um, 
I, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I like those uh, creatures. So yeah. Um, and then Krampus himself was absolutely terrifying. He's not in it until like the last 15 minutes of the film. But no, when but... he shows up, everybody just gets taken. That's... Yes. Uh, but I think one of the important things, like this movie does a really good job of showing you the personalities and like who the characters are. It makes you feel for every single one of them, including Aunt Dorothy. When, when she's like, can you watch the kids? And she's like, all right, kids, I'm going to show you how to make... I'm going to show you how to make peppermint schnapps. Yeah. And then she, like, gives the kids alcohol. And yep. it was just kind of like, well, they are hey, aunt, terrified. Aunt, and aunt Dorothy can come hang out at my house anytime and make uh, peppermint schnapps. But not for your kid. I mean, I don't... I Okay, so here's some, some fun fact for you. Like, I've definitely drank underage due to older adult family members at holiday parties slipping me a little something-something just for the holiday. It happens. Yeah. But, I'm not going to blame But, you. no, Aunt Dorothy is, seems like that cool aunt who would totally do that for you. Yeah, Now, right, there's that's... definitely an age limit there that you should be smart about. You should right. never give underage kids booze. I get all that. Um, right. But that's that's what I'm trying to correlate it to is like, yeah, it's definitely like a cool aunt. Mm. Trying to be. For sure. For sure. What a kid, also, kid would think that you would school. Scared out of their minds. Yeah. Not probably caring too much about the ramifications of whatever they're doing. Um, those kinds of things definitely weigh in and take effect on your mind whenever you're making decisions. So I, I give her a break. What did you, uh, which, which toy was your favorite, uh, toy monster um, when they, when they start attacking the family in the house? So I liked the gingerbread. Like yeah. I thoroughly thought the gingerbread was cool. Um, he takes the Shrek gingerbread to a whole nother level for me. Yeah. But that Jack in the box has to be one of the coolest creature effects I've seen in a while. That thing yeah. is massive. It fits people inside of it. So it was it, this Jack in the Box was essentially a snake, and it's just eating mm -hmm. these kids whole. And they managed to rescue one of them. Yeah, uh, they pulled one of the twins out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe uh, Stevie or Jordan. Yeah, but the, the gingerbread was cool though because of the um, when the the uh, I'm, this is going to sound terrible, but the fat cousin, um, the one who likes food. Oh, Howie Junior. That's an easy yeah. name to remember. So Howie Junior, when he goes and eats the cookie. And then the, the Krampus hook comes down and gets him and then pulls his ass up the chimney. That was probably like one of my favorite scenes of the kids getting eaten. Because I don't know whose hook it is. I thought it was Krampus's, but that wouldn't make much sense, right? Because it was the first kill. It was in the middle of the night. It was before Beth. Right. Or was it the night after Beth? I can't remember. It's the, Yeah, I don't... I'm mixing them up. Yeah, so can't, Krampus gets, gets him and then he gets... Well, he gets the kid, he gets Beth first. Yeah, and then they're in the house. And then and it's then that night. They're they're all holed up, and they're he's by the chimney, and then he gets pulled up, and he's gone because he's eating the damn cookie. Gluttony. He's out of the film. Gluttony. Yeah. So then the twins get taken to the attic. Mm-hmm. One of them gets saved. Before that, Uncle Howie gets attacked in the snow, and Ben Wyatt oh, from yeah. Parks and Rec decides to save him. And uh, they they bond, and he's one of the comments he makes when he goes out to to save his kids. He's like, "I'm starting to like you, I really am." But this is something I have to do. I need to respect that. And I feel like that was when you know, like, okay, they've bonded now. Yeah, and I mean, I was like that that was the purpose, I believe. Any anytime two people suffer something like that together, yeah, like you're gonna bond. You're gonna have this understanding together, regardless of your opinions. Like right. True, true Colors opinions. came out and like yeah. he kept jabbing at him and then he started realizing Well he hey, called him a damn Boy Scout right off the bat. Like you you know he was making fun of him being a Boy Scout, which is kind of you know, that's one of those muscle head kind of moments. I don't understand why somebody with guns would call someone a Boy Scout. That doesn't make sense. It to doesn't. Me. No. Uh you know, re Republicans. I grew, <laughs> I grew up in a very conservative family and they're they're trying to kind of push the fact that this guy's conservative. You yeah, you're not going to make fun of a Boy Scout. You, I mean, you wouldn't. The no. Republicans support Boy Scouts 100%. Most do, yeah. Uh, before we get political, <clears throat> which we're not at all. This is That's not this podcast. If you want that podcast, please come back in 35 years from now, Whoa. and maybe a, po a podcast about politics will be done. Okay. Not by me. Not by uh, me. Anyhow, everybody gets taken. Everybody gets taken, except for Max, who gets a bell. Krampus gives him, and then... As a gift. 
Yes. And then Max wakes up. And this is a huge spoiler. Probably skip ahead five minutes if you don't want to get spoiled on this because this is worth watching the movie for. Max goes downstairs and he sees his family there. And they're like, oh, hey. And they're having a happy Christmas. And then he's like, oh, open this present. Yeah. And inside the presents, the present is the bell Krampus gave him. And the family just kind of look. They look around kind of awkwardly. And then it shows kind of panning outward to the house and then inside outside of the house is a snow globe which they are inside mm -hmm. it shows krampus holding the snow globe up and that's it and that's the end what do you think about that i think that's amazing what do you do you think they're trapped in the i snow think globe? they're trapped in the snow globe i think they're trapped in a perfect christmas day like he wanted because at the end of the day, that's realistically, that's what Max's wish was, is he wanted everything to go back to the way it was when they had happy Christmases. Okay. Um, so my my theory is that you... Well, he wanted to take it back at the very end. He said, I'm taking my wish back. Yeah. I, my thing is, you got to be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. um, just because you wanted to take it back doesn't mean Krampus is going to give it back. Okay. Potentially. Yeah. I think that's a fun... I, I, it's one fun, easy... It's an easy ending. He, right? That's just following the flow. This is how I like to, to think about how they ended. This is the second time I've seen this movie. Okay. Um, but I like to think of it as Krampus taught them a lesson. And he, they're not stuck inside the snow globe. Krampus is looking at them and then just going... Through a snow globe? There he's going, portal okay, kind of thing? Okay, they learned their lesson and kind of putting it away. Huh. But I feel like they left it open-ended enough for the, uh, the viewer to come Clark, out. you literally just blew my mind with that ending idea. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Because I just stuck with the horror aspect. You just you just put it back to like the light. Like you brought the end of that film back to like a good place, not a bad place. I went to a bad place. I feel like they're they're all realizing, hey, we were taught a lesson. Because yeah. they all bonded over it. And they yeah. all grew. And yeah. the kid got his wish. So I feel like it ended on a high note. Holy shit, dude. Um, but that is... That's awesome. Yeah, and that is Krampus. So we're going to move on to Jack Frost. This movie is about a father who can't keep his promises, dies in a car accident, one year later returns as a snowman who whoa, has whoa, a final wait, wait, chance. Wait. That's the wrong movie. Oh, wait, you're right. That's not the Michael Keaton movie. What the hell are you doing? Oh, you're right. We watched the bad Jack Frost oh, about a serial killer st <laughs> puppet snowman who decides to murder people. <laughs> You son of a bitch. I was still in a daze from Krampus. I but forgot. I did that on purpose. You son of a bitch. You almost snuck that in on me. Um, oh my god. So for those of you that don't know, uh, there were two Jack Frost within a year of each other, release right. date. The first one came out in 1997. That's the horror film that we're going to be discussing today. There's also a family-friendly Christmas movie that came out in 1998 starring Michael Keaton as Jack Frost. Much better film if you're into holiday stuff, which my family and I are. We love watching that movie. Um, but anyways, we're going to be discussing the horror film from 1997, which is terrible. And damn it, Clark, you almost snuck that in there on me, you son of a bitch. So, this movie is about... This movie sets the tone right off the bat. This is not meant to be take, taken seriously. It's one-liners and terrible kills. Uh, this serial killer was put away by a small-town sheriff who he wants to kill. He wants to kill his family and everything he loves. Yeah, it's payback. And Yeah, it's, it's a payback movie. And he ends up getting loose. There's a car accident. He gets out. And then some cryogenic magic fluid flies on top of him and he melts into the snow yeah so then... it's it's not the fbi it's not the cia it it's is some the... other government ops isn't it because they're pretending to be fbi agents well, i thought yeah the, well, the guy says he's a, he's an fbi agent which i believe he is okay. and then there's the guy who works for the company the scientist or whatever the company yeah okay. the scientist guy yeah so jack frost um, is going to be executed that's what you're talking about he's yeah. on his way to his execution or whatever and um freak accident happens yada 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 he's out gets hit with the acid which like reorganizes his molecular structure into a snowman. Well, he he essentially melds melds with the snow, and he's the ability to turn into water and yeah. and snow. But before all this happens, there's there's this guy giving a Christmas story to what's supposed to be a little girl. 
What are you going to tell me right now? No, you remember the very beginning of the movie. I do. He's, he's like, reading a story to his granddaughter. He's like, do you want a scary story or a happy scary story? Correct. And she's like, happy scary story. And that's yeah. what her voice sounds like. It's it's a, an adult woman. It's a woman. little girl, yeah. It's an adult woman pretending to be an adult woman. Or an adult woman pretending to be a little girl. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I, I, it looked like a little girl to me. You can't even see her. You, you just hear the voice. Oh, is it really just a voice? I yeah. thought she's laying on the bed and the grandpa, you can't see the grandpa. Really? I don't remember no, seeing I, the that's, kid. No, this is my memory. This could be bad. I don't, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. Carl. We're, uh, we're heading the, heading into the Mandela effect right here. And now uh, Scott McDonald is Jack Frost. Well, this grandpa tells a very gross Christmas story to his granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, What? <laughs> He's like, you wanted a goddamn story, didn't you? Yeah, he sounds so mean. Says, Shut up and listen. Anyhow, Jack Frost, just one-liners galore. So this is galore. what <laughs> this is what Night of the Scarecrow was supposed to be. This is I keep going back to this because if they had left the one-liners in, the jokes, the subtle quotes that we get from Jack Frost throughout this entire movie, it would have been ten times better. Oh, God, this movie is okay. Here's my quick synopsis of Jack Frost 1997. It was a great film. It's funny. So good. It's horrific. There are moments of scariness to it, but more than anything, it's a goddamn Christmas horror film. That's exactly what it is. It's perfect it's, for it's, this time of year. It's the Christmas. So we have Thanksgiving, and then we have Jack Frost. Thanksgiving didn't have the same budget Jack Frost had. I would say Jack Frost is the better of the two movies. Has similar one-liners. Uh, and the snowman, he, uh, did, you want to talk about the rape scene? We will. You want to talk? Okay. We can do it right now. There's, I mean, there's a rape scene in this movie, by I'm the way. I'm still not so sold that it was rape. It was rape because he said, because he, I know. he has the carrot, the carrot's not on his nose and he's, he's, oh, he's it wasn't doing on the his motion. Nose. He's doing the motions and then he puts her dead body down and then he puts his nose back on his face and he says, oh, I'm sorry, sorry for doing it so quickly yeah there are references to how fast he he came there were definitely sex said, jokes i yeah i should leave flowers so so the the snowman rape snowman uh, nadia from american pie yeah which she's like 18 i think or so so that this was the beginning of her career yeah yeah uh anyhow you know who i'm talking about right yeah i know what you're talking about the that's the only other student. film i know of her being in that was popular yeah that's what i know her from <laughs> american so, pie so she, that happened yeah. Probably snowman. didn't need to happen. What was the... Uh, I sent you a, a quote. Holy moly! Billy killed Ted! The Jack Frost is... There's a snowman in front of the yard. Mm -hmm. He kicks up some, a snow icicle and a toboggan hits this kid and is, he gets decapitated. Oh, yeah, yeah. So whenever... Whenever they're picking on the little boy, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, the first kill that really kind of gives you some really Fun, 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 fun stuff. Uh, holy moly, Ryan killed Billy. The snowman asks the uh, the kid's father who died for a cigarette as well. And the guy, he uh, he tries to stab or kill the snowman with an axe. And he said, I just axed for a smoke. Yeah. Jams the axe, the axe <laughs> down his throat. Uh, yeah, would Okay, so another fun piece of this movie. Yeah. Um, we we're bouncing all over the place, but yeah, I think it's gonna make no. I think it's gonna make people want to watch it. It's free to watch on Tubi. Um, please do. It's a great movie for this time of year. Um, the doctor. So when the doctor's checking all these bodies off, like he knows exactly. He knows every intricate detail of what's been basically what's going on with all these kills. I was thinking there was more of a red herring. Like we know who the killer as is uh, killer is as viewers, but. The sheriff had no idea. Everybody, well, the two guys knew it was Jack Frost because when right. he got a call, he's like, it's happening. But not the doctor. Not the doctor who's working with the sheriff. Oh. The, what do they call them? The ones that come in. The and coroner. Actually, the coroner, yeah. Yeah. So when the coroner was there, he's like, this guy was shoved, was killed with an axe. But the weird thing is, it looks like it was shoved down his throat, but that would take a lot of strength. Like, this guy has way more information than the sheriff could ever get, yet they can't put two and two together to realize that there's something much bigger than a person doing these things like they're still looking for a person yeah 
Well, they don't know how how the killings happen, so they're confused. But they don't know it's a it's a snowman. Like, it's... see, my worry was that they were trying to set up a red herring to make the sheriff think the coroner was the killer. But realistically, I, I don't know because he had so much detail into how the killings happen. But mm. then again, it is his job, right? So I guess he has to know that stuff. Well, his kid also gave him some oats with antifreeze in it to eat. So he's not a, he doesn't exactly have you know good brain genes in his family. Well, that poor kid. Yeah. Yeah, he got blamed for murder. Well, let's go back to... And then he almost murdered his dad. Another one of the kills is one of the characters. I'm, I'm going to kind of rush through this. But uh, she wanted to be... She always wanted to be the angel on top of a Christmas tree. And she lets the, the sheriff know that. And Ironically enough, she did. The snowman takes her face, jams it into some glass ornaments, old-fashioned glass ornaments, and then just wraps her up in tinsel and popcorn and then... Puts a star on top of her head and, and kills puts her, her ass on the tree. Yeah, she's the angel on top of the tree. That poor wife. She's so dopey too. Her character. That's just a bad character for her. Um, she she had to play dumb the entire movie. Well, she was abused. She was abused housewife. That that she's not that she, she was dumb. She was just, no no like she played dumb. Oh. She did a lot. Like her role. I'm saying her real person having to act. She had to play down like this dumb character. And I get I I. I I get that she was abused, so maybe she was trying to play an abused wife, but uh, I mean, I don't know. That seems... I didn't, I didn't feel that she was dumb. I just felt she was kind of, you know... She's just out there. Naive. Drunk. A little hurt. Maybe drunk all the time? Maybe. Maybe. I really want to be the angel, the angel on top, on top of a tree. Christmas tree. Well, she, it's like, what the... She's got that good attitude, and her husband's just a huge, massive... Oh, duck. yeah. Duck. For sure. Because the husband, right after he, she tells him that or whatever, because she's talking to them, and he goes, okay, honey, now can you do what I asked? Right. Like, yeah, no no love, no care there. So when they find out it's Jack Frost doing all these murders and killing people and throwing out one-line quips, and then Jack Frost shows up, and then they they quote-unquote kill him mm -hmm. with the blow dryers, He uh, when he meets the scientist, and he's like, how does it feel to be immortal? And he's like, feels cold. <laughs> he, uh, the, this, this is one of the weirdest things. He like, he puts himself in the guy's body. Yes. He liquid, he liquidizes in him and he's just like mm -hmm. walking outside and the sheriff's just like looking at him like. Something's not right. Yeah, but he doesn't do anything. But he doesn't know what, I don't know if he knows what to do. Yeah. Well, and the scientist is just like, fuck it. <laughs> just vomits out Jack Frost. Well, the scientist didn't. Jack Frost vomited himself out. Because yeah. at that point, he took over the scientist's body, right? Like So stupid. There's your suspension of disbelief. <laughs> That's where it went. Yeah. It was at that moment, Clark, you were no. like, nah, this shit's not real. Can't happen. No, that... that <laughs> not that. It's just... I thought it was pretty cool that he took over the body. I thought, I thought it, was... it was pretty dumb that he spit himself out right then and there. It made no sense. Well, he couldn't even walk. He barely uh, moved. I mean, he was waddling, and the the sheriff wasn't going to do anything. That's your getaway. He's an immortal snowman. Like, what is the yeah. snowman afraid of? And he's Plus, like, he wants to kill the sheriff. Like, that's his whole goal, right? Well, right so then... So he's not going to just leave. Yeah, and right then and there, somebody hits the snowman with a car, and he flies in the air, and he goes, I can see your house from up here! <laughs> All the quotes from this movie are so good <laughs> for the killer. Everyone else sucked. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the acting was not great in this film, though. Oh, no, it wasn't. Uh, was... Even Jack Frost wasn't great, but... At no. least he had the the one liners. Like, this the is... writers gave him some good ones. Um, yeah, no, this. I mean, it's a fun movie to watch. Okay, it's got a terrible rating. It's not a great film by any means, but it was pretty fun. Like I can't complain. Last week I was a pretty grumpy sourpuss with elves, but this is Sharknado. This I, is this puts this. I put this. I put up this with Sharknado. above Sharknado. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would too. Honestly, <laughs> like Sharknado did it completely on purpose, and sci-fi was completely self-aware when they made this. Yeah. And Jack Frost was self-aware enough to. I don't know. I feel like the actors did their best to make a good movie. Um, I think they try to act their asses off. They're just not very good. I I, I felt they did fine. Okay. I didn't have any issues. I thought they were all B-rated actors. Like they did exactly what they needed to. Yeah, to looking make at that lineup, movie. I don't know any of them did anything big after this, right? No, they don't need to. Anyhow, the uh, thing that killed the snowman was antifreeze. And yet there is a sequel, so I guess we'll find out what happens in the sequel next year. 
What did you, uh, so Curtis, final verdicts. What do you think about Krampus and Jack Frost? I love Krampus. Uh, it's definitely an annual watch for me every year around this time. I slap it in and watch it. Um, I actually just bought it on Amazon Prime because I wanted to have a copy that I could get to anywhere. Um, as for Jack Frost, I like it. I think it's a very fun movie. I don't know if this is an annual watch for me. I just don't. I don't think it has that much rewatchability unless, and we always do this, unless I was hanging out with a group of people and they haven't seen it or they are cheering to watch it. That's probably the only time I could make it an annual watch is if that was like the setting. Because I'm just not going to go watch this on my own. Krampus, I'll watch it, I'll, I'll watch it again tonight, probably, actually. Yeah. Um, but I can't see myself doing that with Jack Frost. Now, Jack Frost 2, that's a whole other story. I think that one has a lot more I haven't seen it. to offer. Really? Okay. Yes. Yeah, how the hell do you do a frozen snowman on a, on a beach island getaway? Oh, I love it. Just you wait. I I really loved Jack Frost. I would give it a I give it a 7 out of 10 in terms of horror movies. Like if I want to watch something with witty one-liners and I want to just watch something just dumb and I know mm -hmm. it's dumb, I would watch this over Sharknado. And I know a lot of people love Sharknado for what it is, but... Yeah, it has a whole cult following. Jack Frost, beautiful movie. Nice. Uh, I think I might like it more than Thanksgiving. I <laughs> love... How? You love that movie. I did. I loved it. You just got stuff. <laughs> I think they're both good in their own way. Okay. I, I will say Krampus is a 9 out of 10. Easy 9 out of 10. Just because of the acting, just because of the writing, just because of the characters, just because of kind of they give you the ability to kind of make your own idea of what happened and yeah. set everything in stone so yeah, yeah. nothing is solid um, I mean it definitely has some kind of structure um, yeah I love it I love it great love your opinion yeah. um, so what do you want to do now no, <laughs> well I, I guess we can thank you guys for listening to our podcast uh, we've been two guys in some horror uh, you could reach out to us on our Instagram channel Twitter uh, I believe we're on... Are we on Facebook yet? Not yet. Not yet, but right now on Instagram and Twitter, it's Two Guys Horror Pod, and uh, that is the number two guys horror pod. I well, You could also reach out to us at two guys and some horror mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, if you have any feedback for us, it's more than appreciated. You can also watch, listen to our podcast. We are on Spotify. We are on Google. We're on Apple Podcasts C. and a few other uh, miscellaneous places. Yeah. Most of our listens right now are coming from Apple Podcasts mm -hmm. and the iTunes desktop app. So that's really good to hear. Um, we thought a lot of our listeners were coming from Spotify originally. Yeah. Uh, but it's good to know that there's all of you out there listening from different medias. So we're out there. We're on all the medias. We're thinking about getting a Facebook page like Clark just mentioned set up. It may be set up by the time this episode airs uh, next Saturday, but which would be today for you guys, but I don't know. Um, podcasts are such a funny thing. Future people, past people, present people, all of you, whoever you are listening. We're going to have a lot of different ways to get a hold of us and hang out with us. Um, there's a couple of conventions I have my eye on that we're looking for here locally in Arizona. Um, and who knows, like, maybe we'll see you guys out there at a con near you. Who knows? Well, thanks, for, uh, thanks for listening. We do appreciate it. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you.